We learned about the sun, moon, and stars, and we know that when it's a clear night, we can look up in the dark sky and see those stars twinkling up above, and they're so far away, and they just look like little lights. But when we look at a bunch of them, they look like we can play dot to dot and connect them and make a picture. And that picture is called a constellation. And since we're learning about animals now, this book is neat to connect the two. It's called Zoo in the Sky. And it's by Jacqueline Mitten and pictures by Christina Ballot. So you can see like here, this um, lion, it's a bunch of dots on the lion, which those are the stars. And if you use your visualization and think about it, um, you can pretend that those dots would connect to look like a lion. So this book says it's a book of animal constellations. Zoo in the sky. Here is, if we looked at the dots of the stars in the sky, in the southern sky, we can see some different constellations there. And then there's also the northern sky. And you can see all the different constellations there. And now we're going to read about the animal shapes that some of them can make. When the sun sets, darkness falls. The stars appear one by one. Then the sky turns to a picture puzzle. What is hit hiding in the patterns of stars? Some people say they only see squares and squiggles, lines and loops. But imagine hard, and the sky comes to life. The star patterns make a wing here, a tail there, a twinkling eye, even a scorpion's stinger. Sky watchers long, long ago imagined a whole zoo of animals. They shine there still when you are under the magic spell of a nighttime sky. And here, this one is called the Great Bear. The Great Bear quietly pads her way around the North Pole of the sky. Every day she makes the trip. Two bright stars across her back point straight to Polaris, the North Star. Hanging off Polaris by his tail, the little bear swings around behind her. You won't see bears quite the same anywhere else. Real live bears don't have long tails. <clears throat> Countless stars light the Milky Way. Along the silvery path with wings outstretched flies the swan on July and August nights. He soars from east to west across the sky. It takes him from dusk till dawn. His eye gleams with a twin star, yellow and blue, called Albiro. He needs a good eye to keep a sharp look, sharp lookout. The cunning fox runs beneath him, looking for his dinner. So those we can only usually see in the summer sky. The scorpion. Now, a scorpion is a sea creature. The scorpion has a nasty sting in his tail. Beware as he scuttles across the Milky Way. His tail is curved around, and he is waving his fearsome claws and tears a blood red star glows in his heart. But the wolf nearby is not afraid. After all, he is not such a friendly creature himself. Ooh, Leo the lion. Leo the lion is king of the beasts and lord of the sky. In February and March, he looks down from a throne high up in the heavens. Stars in his mane shine like jewels in a crown. His brightest star lies close to his heart. That star's name is Regulus, which means the little king. So we can't see this constellation anymore because it's not showing up in our night sky. We saw it in February and March. Charging through the zodiac, here comes the bull. Can you see that big bull there? Head down, horns thrust forward, Taurus is ready to toss the twins, but they are safe, always on the other side of the Milky Way. The bull glowers with a brilliant red eye, the star Aldebaran. A whole cluster of stars is scattered around his nose. The Pleiades huddle behind his shoulder. These starry 
sisters are not afraid. They know he never looks back. <laughs> Here's a favorite animal. It's not really one at the zoo, but the great dog is chasing the hare, but knows he never can catch it. This dog is a splendid star-studded creature. His brightest star, Sirius, outshines all others in the night sky. Sirius means scorching one, a good name for a white hot star. But spot it low in the sky and Sirius flashes all the colors of the rainbow like a diamond glinting in sunlight. Deep in the southern sky, the glittering goldfish swims alongside where the good ship Argo sails, an ocean of stars. The flying fish gives chase in fun soaring out of the waves. Now take care, he warns, we must not get caught. But the fish are safe in their starry sky, in their starry sea. They will never be anyone's dinner. Whoa. There's a big whale. The whale is the greatest of all living creatures. He is one of the largest in the sky, too. A monstrous size, he is sometimes called the sea monster. On the whale's back, you find Mira, the marvelous star. See how red it glows? Can you see that reddish glow? It's kind of right in the crack of the book. It glows by his fin, and Mira keeps dimming till it disappears. Then little by little, it brightens once more. About a year later, it's back, bright as ever, only to fade all over again. A zoo without birds would never do. In the sky, there's a whole flock parading by the South Pole. Tails on display, the proud peacock and the bird of paradise show off to anyone who watches. The toucan's glory is his beak, studded with an orange star. The crane peers at them all, stretching his long neck. Red and blue stars shine on his back. The long, scaly body of the crimson-eyed dragon coils around the north pole of the heavens. Take care, he might breathe fire. You won't find a dragon like him in an ordinary zoo. But the starry sky is magic, and one fine sparkling night, who knows, you just might fall under his spell. All right, so that just tells more about stars that we already learned about. But now you can think about if you were to make a group of stars put together, what animal would you like to try to make in, if you could connect the dots and make them in the sky?